we, we have covered Bu slash Nia, so Nia, but formerly known as Bu. Uh, but yeah, there, there was a really cool article up from Vice. Vice do every now and then write like an amazing gaming article that doesn't get read as much as it should. And I haven't really heard much people, many people talk about this, but essentially it's a really cool article where it covers Nia's now 25 year journey to try to localize uh, a Super Nintendo game, Squaresoft or Square game back in those, wait, yeah, Square game. Squaresoft back then. Squaresoft back then, yeah, that's yeah, right. Square Enix now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a game back in the day, Bahama uh, Lagoon. Uh, and, and yeah, the article is just like really cool just to cover sort of the history of, of, you know, Nia originally when I think they were saying he was 15, tried to like localize the game, was really passionate about it, you know, wanted to learn Japanese just to translate it. Then, yeah, and one thing, I, like I was just saying about Nia and, you know, again, formerly known as Bu, he created uh, Beast Ness and Higan and a whole bunch of other emulators. But I would say from a community perspective, to me, he's the most important person that's ever ha- that we've ever had in the whole SNES community. So I wore my little SNES t-shirt today, given that <laughs> we're going to talk about this. Um, I love the drive to perfection. Like I'm a bit of a reformed or reforming perfectionist. Uh, and no, no, you're still a perfectionist and it's, it's <laughs> sometimes driving the two of us nuts. Yeah, yeah. I'm always like criticizing them for settings and all this other kind of stuff. But um, Oh no, your microphone has to have the gain <laughs> on 37.2%. Pretty much, pretty much. 38% is too high. But, but there is something beautiful about like the strive for perfection. You know, you, you read about how they make, um, you know, traditional Swiss watches and clocks and things like that. It's quite, yeah, quite it like And intricate. I'm a bit like that too, so. Yeah, and he really... Really, always strove to create the best. So with SNES, he Better was trying to create a cycle accurate uh, SNES emulator. And I would say, if you want to play the games as they were played, something like B SNES is totally fine to play that. You don't need to get an FPGA solution or an actual SNES. They are so accurate. The the emulators that he created, mostly around the SNES. But this whole story was so fascinating because I knew this about him that he was always wanting to translate this game. I didn't know that it was just recent, like this year, where he'd finally done the final patch that he was comfortable with That's and so released cool. it in Feb 2021. <laughs> so I think he had five cracks at it, uh, including learning the language himself. And I think he was going to translate it himself at one stage, but then got another person to translate it. And yeah, it's it's not just as simple as going, okay, here's the text. It's, you know, given back in the day, a lot of the SNES and NES games with uh, the Japanese characters, essentially their monospace characters always have the same amount of space between them, very different to most other languages. So to actually properly do justice to the translation, you need to have a, you know, something that can dynamically display the fonts rather than just have them all monospace, which looks horrible. Mm. And the amount of re-engineering he had to do to get that working. But then the thing that I love the most about the whole article is that you know, pulling apart this game, you know, and it's so difficult because he doesn't have the game. Com- the well, that's code. the thing. I think we should mention that, right? You mm. don't get the code to recompile no, it. No, You have to reverse engineer the whole Correct. thing, basically. So he yeah. reverse engineered the whole thing. And then he noticed, oh, the way they're displaying <laughs> the dialogue boxes around the text, they've made errors in how they've done that. Like two pixels in yeah, yeah. one spot. <laughs> so he, re- he, re- awesome. he did a bug fix for their game <laughs> to fix their actual coding of the game itself. That was so, so now, cool. it, now it I displays completely accurately. I, My I, favorite, I love yeah. this article. It was so cool. It was a really cool article, yeah. It was almost like I, I relived... Well, I, I did nothing like that during my childhood, but it, it was almost like it, it made you relive your childhood and your journey in life and, and you know, personally made me question some decisions I've made. But one thing that I thought was really cool was the part when he went to his grandma's place and, mm. on a farm and... He couldn't bring his PC and stuff, so he just took the internal components and then using whatever pocket change he had, he bought a whole bunch of other parts at that town and re you know, re put his entire PC back together so his parents wouldn't know whoever did that. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, no, so, it was awesome. It was awesome. That was an awesome bit. Yeah. Yeah. Was I, there anything else that we needed to cover, Swinny? No, I just wanna just again, you mentioned it just call out the fantastic work that Vice does. So Patrick Klepek and Austin Walker and all those Mm. have been part of, you know, when it was Waypoint at some point, and they're kind of still branded as Waypoint a bit. Just they're they're writing about stuff that no one else in the industry writes about, and there's such a love for what they do. 
and also just uh, Bahamut Lagoon as well. So that's always shit. I've always been super keen on trying this game at some point, and it kind of shares. Mm, now you can. It shares this <laughs> weird space of almost forgotten Squaresoft SNES RPG. So I bundle this in with your Treasure Hunter G style game. Yeah. Where, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. games that also came out quite late in the SNES lifetime. Um, that by that point, people had moved on to the PlayStation RPGs or. You know, and you'd always see these games. Like I'd, I'd see these games in EGM and 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 Super Play and that, and it's like, man, I just want to play the. You know, and in Australia we, we weren't even getting a lot of the US games, but then there's this other part. It's like, oh man, these cool Squaresoft RPGs. You know, so it's great and it's awesome the the dedication that Nier has put into finally, I guess, achieving his goal. He's almost like it seems like his lifetime goal, but uh, yeah, he's, you know, he's still probably got a lot of uh, projects left uh, in the tank. Sounds like a true perfectionist. So. Oh yeah, massively. I actually might try to reach out to him and just try to get him on the show because I'd love to pick his brain about what's next because he seems like a really, really <sighs> interesting so cool. character. Yeah. And just like, <clears throat> you know, when he was trying to do uh, like a PlayStation emulator, it was just like flying through. It was like insane. Like people were just like, wow, this is truly insane how quickly he's going through everything. Um, so yeah, it just seems like a really interesting character. And you know, I love the Super Nintendo. It's still my favorite console. I have to say the Switch is getting up there. I think the Switch probably eventually will be my favorite console. Um, but yeah. Eventually, I, what 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 will make it become your favorite console, you think? Well, I think, you know, like if they release like a Switch Pro and that that's pretty decent and you know, then you have a good another good Breath of the Wild game, maybe Metro Prime 4, it's gonna be pretty hard okay. to argue. But yeah, no, it's it's really cool. Very cool article. I totally agree with what you're saying, Swinney. And you don't see a lot of long form gaming below. journalism. Um so apart from Jason Schreier, pretty much it doesn't really exist in the industry, so it's good to yeah, see. That, it's really good that, to see, and that's that's because I think a lot of um, you know, <laughs> it's it's like the review that I'm about to do. I suppose you get a lot of people maybe coming into the industry that aren't traditional journalists; they're just bloggers. <laughs> and whereas I think these guys have, you know, they've been around for a while. I don't know what their qualifications are, but it feels like they're actual journalists. I, if that look, makes sense. They they look into the stories, they research, they do that. Kind there's of stuff. there's people out there, you know, some of them just aren't having their voice heard so i think mm. that it'll be interesting to see what games journalism is but in 20 years but that's a that's a whole different topic so. yeah and our final piece of news today so uh 